besides the apparitions reported on this site alone, trains have also been seen to be traveling way past operational hours with no one on board. One of the most busier stories is that of a college student who saw what looked like victims inside the train he was on late one night. Surprisingly, his legs become sore when he reached his destination. He talked about what happened with the security guard's duty, only to find out that there was no train all along and he had run the whole way. The third place. Don't forget to hum when passing by. Jakarta. There is one thing. Jalan Casablanca or Casablanca Street. Jalan Min Street is known for inhuman levels of traffic all day, every day. As the main access road connecting to suburbs to the city, the number of drivers and their dodgy road ethics will surely haunt you in your sleep. The traffic is so bad that passing by Jalan Casablanca or Casablanca Street every day, we often forget the road's sinister secret. Although the 8km stretch consists mainly of straight roads, it is a surprising fact that an accident occurs here every other week and even the newly built flyover has already claimed a number of lives, tracing back to its origins. When Casablanca Street was built in the 80s, an underpass had cut right through the Manteng Pulau Cemetery. The mishandling of corpses while relocating them is said to have upset the spirits, including a particular lady in red. A few years later, an elderly man was found hanging by the neck at the end of the underpass, and so they say, always remember to hung three times as you enter the tunnel or you might be given an unpleasant welcome. Fourth place, go on supernatural shopping spree at Mall Glender, Jakarta. The sudden collapse of Indonesia's economy in the late 90s had stirred up violence within the people, resulting in looting, mass murders, and rape. On May 15, 1998, an army of looters seized the Yogyakarta, the Yogyakarta department store. As shopkeepers and visitors scramble for safety, a fire was deliberately started and soon engulfed the four-story building. More than 300 people were trapped, afraid of being harmed if they escaped the building. They remained inside to meet the very dead. The scars of what is now referred to as May Kalabu, or in English means Grey May, remains in the hearts of the affected no matter how hard they try to forget. One of the darker moments in Indonesia history, the incident shocked the nation as well as the international community. Although the departmental store was rebuilt as the Glender Mall in the year 2000, it is, it is still difficult for the locals to let go of the traumatic memories that linger here. Echoes are said to haunt the area, including phantom bus passengers who usually hitch a ride at night, only to disappear a few hundred meters later. A phone booth that was part of the original building is also never removed, as it is believed it would upset the spirits attached to it. Place number 5. The epicenter of the Bogor Triangle, Mount Salak. Out of the many places in Indonesia that claim to be haunted, Mount Salak has swallowed the greatest number of victims to date, including seven unexplained air crashes in the past decade that involved planes which suddenly lost contact with control towers. Although not as tall as most mountains in Java, conquering Mount Salak is considered to be a daunting task. Even to experienced hikers, Besides its deadly trails, lakes, and poisonous gates claim the lives of unlucky hikers every year. Many of those who survive tell horrific tales walking around in circles for hours when they lost their way in its dense forest. The most recent air crash on Mount Salak took place on May 9, 2012, when a 
Russian super jet on a test run supposedly flew right into the face of a cliff after losing radio contact, killing everyone on board. But most peculiarly, the search and rescue team all reported of having the exact same dream about a mysterious woman who led them into a house full of beautiful women. The same team also reported to have heard a woman crying for help, but she was never found. The cries only came from a different area than that of the crash. Base number six. Never wear green in the South Sea, Pelabuhan Ratu Sukabumi. A tale of jealousy within the royal family of 16th century kingdom of Mataram has broke about the death of a queen who gave her life to the open sea and a legend that lives on. Just a few hours from the bustling city of Jakarta lie the beautiful beaches of South Sukabumi with Pelabuhan Ratu right in the center of it. It's a coastal town where beach villas scatter all over white sandy beaches with the curl of the waves just right to satisfy any surfer. Don't get too carried away though, quite a handful of holiday makers have never resurfaced after taking a dip in the ocean. Most of the victims were men, suspected of wearing green attributes while swimming, and stories spread that the Nyirorokido or Queen of the Southern Sea of Java took their lives as wearing her colors upset her. Different from most urban legends in Indonesia, Nyirorokido presents it. Different from most urban legends in Indonesia, Nyororo Kidul presents is referred by many, including President Sukarno himself. In fact, room 308 of the Samudra Beach Hotel has been reserved for our visit. Available for meditation purposes, the room is beautifully designed with green and golden traits or colors she love. Those in the smell of jasmine and incense. But are you brave enough to have a date with the Queen of the South. Place number seven, a house of satanic worship, Octopus House, Bandung. The public's question has been answered. In 2013, a local news channel was said to debunk the ongoing rumors of satanist church in Bandung. The unmissable sculpture of a giant octopus sitting on the roof of the house had sparked up much curiosity online in the past. A group of journalists attempt to uncover its mystery found that the octopus house is encircled by a series of houses and the only way inside is through house number six and for some reason there are three places where the number six is displayed on the front of the house. The investigation ended when a loud quarrel broke out between the journalists and the great and the caretakers of the house. A person claiming to be a former member of the satanic church reported to the authorities that the house is a huge work called related sex rituals. Several investigations later, no evidence supporting the allegation was found. The owner of the house, Franz Halimawan, appeared on a news broadcast and expressed his worry with the false accusations. As an art devotee, he explained how every piece of the house symbolizes his life journey, including his struggles as well as his beliefs, and that these rumors have offended him deeply. Believe it or not, decide for yourself. Place number eight. A bit of despair and blooded injustice, Lubang Buaya in Jakarta, a monument built to commemorate Indonesia's bloody history. The Lubang Buaya or Crocodile Spit in English is the site of the brutal murder of seven army generals by the Communist Party in 1985. It marked a major turning point in Indonesia's governance as the event led to President Sukarno's coup and a military overtake of the country. 25 years later, the museum was opened to educate the public about the events that took place in Lubang Buaya. Wax life-size dioramas reenact how the generals were dragged out of their homes and slaughtered. In the middle of the monument sits a small well, which was where the mutilated bodies of the seven generals were thrown into. The tragedy sparked much controversy from banned propaganda films that used to be mandatory in schools to the CIA's involvement that led to the obscure truth of what really happened. That may be the reason why the cries of Lubang Buaya's restless souls can still be heard from inside the well to the footsteps that echo the hallways at night. 
the shores of Lake Batur in the Gintamini area, the people of Trunyan, unlike the other Balinese communities, neither cremate nor bury their dead. Instead, their bodies are left to rot in bamboo cages under the watchful eye of a fragrant tree that, thankfully, masks the smell of decay. Once the flesh has decomposed completely, the bones of the corpse are staked neatly on the platform that leads to the Trunyan Temple of Death, unfortunately of limits to the public as of now. Place number 10 Enter the void of a volcanic kingdom, Mount Merapi, Yogyakarta. In the same way that Yogyakarta is governed by the Karaton, Mount Merapi is also believed to be a kingdom of its own, a kingdom unseen to human eyes. Predicted to erupt every two to five years, Mount Merapi is one of the most active volcanoes in the world today, sitting at almost 3,000 meters above the sea. It is a compound of breathtaking sights of nature where thousands flock to each year from all over the world. Beyond what our eyes can see, the residents of the surrounding area believe that Mount Merapi is a kingdom of spirits who govern the mountains from fertilizing the land, its weather, and ultimately its eruptions. Instead of fearing these spirits, local residents honor their presence by keeping its environment protected and respecting their space. One place that has become a favorite to those willing to experience the supernatural firsthand in the Pasar Bubra, sitting right below the summit. This area is often used as camping grounds by hikers hoping to catch the sunrise, but just as they are about to doze off, the hustle and bustle of what sounds like a market fills the air, accompanied by a band of gamelans and the strong winds that blow through at night and shows that campers think twice before leaving their tents. Other mysterious hotspots on Mount Merapi includes a bunker where two guards were baked to death during an eruption. The crater of Mount Merapi is also believed to be get away. The crater of Mount Merapi is also believed to be get away into their kingdom with no way out. Place number 11 Hotel for Ghosts, Bedugul Taman Rekreasi Hotel, Bali. Up in the mountains of Bali, on the way to the iconic Bedugul Lake, something is staring in the fog. It's a ghost story some two decades in the making, and it's soaked in skin crawling horrors. Some say the Ghost Palace Hotel, or also known as B. Bedugul Taman Rekreasi Hotel and Resort, a construction bridge on a hillside was built by Tommy Suharto. Others say it was a crook developer who tried to curse his rivals out of the way. If you brave enough to explore this place, you will likely see the wandering spirits of victims, either laborers crushed in the grass to complete the construction, or competitors cursed to horrible deaths. This hotel may never have been open to the public, but who knows if it already has a full house every night. Place number 12. Blooded war torn memories in old school. Tugu Complex Malang. Lodge in the city center of Malang. A piece of history that was once the pride of the city underwent an unexpected turn of events during the final moments of World War II. Leaving behind bitter memories and unanswered questions. All three schools in the vicinity were used as a concentration camps by the Japanese troops who made a system of crawl spaces connecting them to a train station and the governor's office. Legends say, legends say that two high schoolers attempt to explore the tunnels ended gruesomely after one student rushed back screaming, too traumatized to speak. The other the other student was found two weeks later in a train station in a disturbed state. Another, another oddity that remains an answer is what appears to be blood stains on the floor tiles in several buildings, mostly found randomly splattered on the floors of SMA 1, 3, and 4. 
unsuccessful, sometimes with workers falling ill shortly after the job. The Tuku Hall is believed to be the most sinister building in the complex, although the blood stains have been concealed after the installation of wooden floorboards with layers of sand underneath for some reason. The hall is restricted to visitors at night, just in case the headless ghost of soldiers decided to appear. Place number 13, The Land of the Living Dead, Tanah Toraja, South Sulawesi. The Walking Dead does not refer to a television show in Tanah Toraja. Instead, it is an annual ceremony of bringing the dead back to life. As one of the most complex burial rituals in the world, that is actually celebrated by the Torajans. The more extravagant the funeral, the better order to achieve this, families would take months and even years to save up the for a funeral, keeping their dead preserved in their homes, feeding, bathing, and even occasionally taking them for a stroll outside. A person is declared dead only after the ceremony has begun. Dozens of buffaloes and swine are sacrificed to feed the village to view an 11-day funeral of music and dancing. Next, a para takes the disease towards a cliff where their coffins are placed on for babies who die before dating. Holes are carved out of a special tree to be their final resting place. In another part of the tradition, which had been outlawed in recent years, family members would wash and change the clothes of the dead every year in a ceremony called the Ma Nene. But it doesn't end there. The corpses are then taken to the place where they died and are walked back to the cliffs. To replace this obscure tradition, wooden life-size effigies are now placed on the cliffs, fully clothed and jeweled. The Torajans believe that these sculptures will provide the dead with a body to watch over them eternally. So, what do you guys think? Is that, is that scary enough?